this module, we'll cover the basic neuropharmacology of serotonin at the synaptic level, and we'll also look at nutritional and pharmacological modulators of serotonin signaling. Serotonin belongs to the class of neurotransmitters called monoamines, and that is because it has an amine group, just one. Serotonin is also called 5-hydroxytryptamine, or 5-HT. Major clinical areas where serotonergic signaling is relevant are anxiety, depression, appetite regulation, and gastrointestinal function. Serotonin is made from L-tryptophan, and an enzyme called tryptophan hydroxylase converts tryptophan to 5-HTP, and then 5-HTP is converted to serotonin. And once serotonin is made by the presynaptic neuron, it enters vesicles via a monoamine transporter, and the vesicles will store serotonin until an action potential arrives at the, the nerve terminal. And that action potential will trigger a voltage-gated calcium channel that lets calcium ions into the cell. And that ion entry stimulates the fusion of the vesicular membrane with the cell membrane and the release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. And once it's in that space, it's free to bind to serotonin receptors. Most of them belong to the G-protein coupled receptor family with the exception of one of them called the 5-HT3 receptor, which is an ion channel. When serotonin is in the synapse, it can bind to a receptor, it can be taken back up into the presynaptic cell or a neighboring glial cell, and it can be metabolized and degraded. The metabolism of serotonin is catalyzed by monoamine oxidase. Nutritionally speaking, the major opportunities are in the biosynthetic pathway, starting with the amino acid tryptophan, which is obtained through dietary protein. You can get tryptophan from any complete protein, provided that there's enough stomach acid and protease activity to break down that protein and release tryptophan as a free amino acid. Tryptophan is hydroxylated to 5-hydroxytryptophan by tryptophan 5-hydroxylase. And then it is decarboxylated to serotonin via the enzyme aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. Micronutrients that support this process include folate, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and vitamin D. Phytochemicals that act as anti-inflammatories might also support the synthesis of serotonin by reducing the breakdown of tryptophan through another pathway. Curcumin and other anti-inflammatories have been investigated with respect to sparing tryptophan and allowing more serotonin to be made. So now that we have serotonin generated and stored in a vesicle, the action potential arrives, stimulates the release. Now we're talking about receptor activation. The effects of binding one of these receptors can be excitatory or inhibitory, depending on the type of receptor. The second messenger system is either cyclic AMP or the IP3 DAG pathway. Drugs that affect serotonergic signaling include antidepressants, antiemetics, and prokinetics used in gastrointestinal settings. Anti-migraine drugs work on certain types of 5-HT receptors and certain hallucinogens, so recreational drugs such as LSD affect serotonergic pathways in the brain. Serotonin reuptake inhibitors are a widely used class of antidepressants. They include fluoxetine and paroxetine that inhibit the reuptake of serotonin by reducing the actions of the transporter that's required for that reuptake. Natural products that might also inhibit this transporter include polyphenols and constituents of certain herbal medicines like rhodiola rosea, but the research on these substances is rather premature to assume that this is the major mechanism by which they elicit their effects. MAO inhibitors are an old class of antidepressants that are no longer in widespread use, but as I mentioned in a recent article, MAO inhibitors do exist in the plant kingdom. They're not nearly as strong as the drugs, but they do appear to affect MAO function. You can support serotonin through a variety of different strategies, starting with amino acids, like providing tryptophan. You can also increase dietary carbohydrate intake to support tryptophan accumulation in the brain. You don't want to use that excessively, but for example, if a patient's having a hard time going to sleep, a little bit of carbohydrate uh, might help them get to sleep sooner if the serotonin levels are low. 5-HTP is a widely used dietary supplement that provides the direct precursor of serotonin. 
There are studies on 5-HTP being orally active and effective. Methionine is an amino acid that's involved in another pathway that indirectly supports serotonin synthesis, and that's the methylation pathway. SAMe is a methyl donor that can be uh, used as an oral agent to support the synthesis of serotonin as well. So SAMe is often used for mood disorders for that reason. Micronutrients that are involved in the biosynthesis of serotonin include folate, vitamin B6, B12, and vitamin D. Anti-inflammatories like curcumin might have utility in supporting serotonin synthesis by reducing the degradation of its precursor, tryptophan. So now you understand the basics of serotonergic signaling and some of the interventions that target various points in the pathway.